I'm going to start by talking about inline JavaScript programs. Now you may not use this type of program very much, but it tells us something very important about the way a web browser handles a web page with JavaScript embedded inside it. I'm using Notepad++, but you could use Notepad for example, or if you happen to have one, you could use a more sophisticated web development tool such as Dreamweaver. Notepad++ is quite adequate and you can download it for free. The first thing I'm going to do is set my language to HTML, which will give me a little bit of extra visual feedback while I'm programming. Now let's put a basic web page together. You can see how Notepad++ is preempting what I want to type, so I can select things from a list using the tab key. So there's my basic web page structure with a head section and a body section. The body section is of course the visible part of the page. If you're not familiar with HTML, you need to review this first because JavaScript is all about manipulating HTML tags. I'm also going to put some comments at the very top so I know what this page is about. This is just for the benefit of the programmer. OK, let's put some text on the page. And let's see how it looks when I save it as an HTML file and view it in a browser. And there's my web page. I've got my first web page in bold because I've wrapped it inside bold tags. I've got the word hello, there's no particular formatting on that. And I've got the word date followed by a pair of brackets. It's taken me literally. There are no line breaks in there because I haven't used any paragraph tags. Let's just modify the HTML to separate things out a little bit. Resave and reload. Not a lot different, all I've done is put things on separate lines. But what I really want to do is display today's date. It's not doing what I hoped. To achieve the effect I'm looking for, I need to embed an inline script. And I can do it like this. That's the opening script tag and the closing script tag. The script tag has an attribute which allows you to specify the language that you're programming in. I'm using JavaScript, of course. Now, I'm not quite there. I need to say that I want to write the date into the document, and I can do this using the write method of the document object. Or to put that more simply, I can use the following command. Now there's a few things going on here. First of all, I'm using the so-called document.write method, the text I originally had, and I've put it inside a pair of brackets. And you can see there's a semicolon on the end of the line. Let's take a look and see what this does. Nothing, apparently. Now I've made a mistake which you are bound to make if you're a JavaScript programmer. JavaScript is unforgivingly case sensitive. Let me just change the word date so that it has a capital D. And I'll try again. That's more like it. And you can see I'm now getting the current date and the time written into the web page. What's going on is that my browser is reading the web page one character at a time. It examines the tags, and as it sees them, it renders the text. So for example, it sees the bold tag, and then it knows that everything that follows must be bold, until it sees the closing bold tag. It sees a paragraph tag and the word hello, so it knows the word hello is in a paragraph of its own. 
it sees another paragraph tag and then it sees the script tag. And it knows that everything in between the script tags is a program that has to be executed. The program will be executed after this text has been rendered. I'll prove that point in just a moment. Now I'm going to show you that document.write can write other things into the HTML text stream. When a web page is being delivered to your browser from a web server, what you're essentially getting is a stream of HTML text. Document.write can modify that stream. It can write things into that text stream. What I'm doing is I'm concatenating some more text in front of the built-in date function. This is my concatenation operator, the plus sign, and then I'm concatenating some more text after it. The text which I'm concatenating is actually well-formed HTML paragraphs. Let's see the effect. OK. Let's do something slightly different this time. I want to write today's date into a pair of existing paragraph tags rather than write the paragraph tags onto the page. So to begin with, I'm going to give some existing paragraph tags an identifier. Let's change the comment at the top of the page as well. Now look at what I've done. I have a pair of paragraph tags. There's my opening paragraph tag and my closing paragraph tag. And there's nothing in between the opening and the closing tag. I've got rid of the word hello. So I'd expect this word to disappear. Let's just try that. As expected. But what I have done is I've given those paragraph tags an identifier my empty paragraph tags. Notice I've used mixed case in the name as well. That's not necessary, but I want to prove a point to you in a moment. Now, rather than using document.write, I'm going to get a hold of one of the elements using document.getElementById. Now I'll specify the element that I want to get a hold of, Notepad++ is very kindly giving me a drop-down list, which I can select from, just using my tab key. And now I'm going to set the inner HTML property of those paragraph tags to the date that I want to display. Again, notice a semicolon on the end of the line. Let's give this a try. OK, you can see that I'm displaying the date twice. The first occurrence on my web page here is coming from the get element by ID command. I've programmatically placed the date in between these two paragraph tags. Let's just tidy this up a little bit. I don't need to display the date twice. Now, before I continue, let me just make an important point about writing HTML into an existing web page using this technique. I'm going to move my empty paragraph tags so that they occur after the script block. Save the page and load it again. Nothing. And there's a very simple reason for this. The script block is seen by the browser before the paragraph tags. The paragraph tags, which our JavaScript program manipulates, don't exist until after the JavaScript program has executed. So the JavaScript program doesn't do anything at all. Let's put things back again.
And there's another thing which I want to point out, which I'm sure you're going to discover. As I said before, JavaScript is very, very unforgiving when it comes to syntax. Let me change this E to a small e. Resave, reload. It's broken. Let me change this B to a small b. Again, it's broken. JavaScript is very case sensitive. And until you get used to it, it can be quite frustrating. That's why it's handy to have something like Notepad++, which will give you quite a bit of help while you're typing. Now, the final thing I want to show you is how to write a JavaScript program in the invisible head section of the page. We can then call the program from within the visible body section. I'll start by cutting and pasting my script block into the head section. But I also need to give the program a name. With JavaScript, every program is a function. I'm going to call it display date. And all of the code which goes inside my function has to be enclosed within a pair of curly brackets. So I've moved my program to a different place in my web page, but it's the same program. Now I need a mechanism by which I can call the program from within the body section of the page. I'm going to put a button on the page. Notice how I've used the so-called onClick event to specify which function I want to run. The text, click here to see the date, is the text that will appear on the button. Let's give it a try. OK, so the date is no longer on the web page, but remember, my empty paragraph tags are still there. When I click the button, it runs the function, and the function writes the date onto the page with the additional text which I've put around it. So to recap, you've seen two types of script. The inline script, in which the script is actually embedded inside the body of the page, and scripts like this will be executed while the page is being rendered. And then you've seen a function which resides in the head section of the page and it can be called as and when it's needed. I suggest you give this a go yourself and try writing different things into the web page. Also, experiment with typing in valid case for various commands. See what you can get away with.